Uh, hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays of Bonnet. And today, I'm coming to you from one of the coolest mountain regions in North America, the Sierra Madre Oriental of Northern Mexico, just outside of Monterrey. Now what we're looking at is a uh, lithography akin to a carpet being pushed up on a hardwood floor. And so this is called the fold thrust belt, with a little bit of the decolement. If you want to look that word up, there's some really cool videos of structural geology videos explaining what's going on here. But basically, this whole mountain range was pushed up like a throw rug on a smooth hardwood floor. And so we get all these really cool anticlines and synclines and different folds and whatnot. And basically, horizontally laid down uh, bedding planes. That once, one time they were the, the floor of an ancient ocean that have been now pushed up nearly vertical and created some really cool plant habitat. So let's check it out. Do you ever see mountains like that? You ever see that? Look at those vertical striations. All those vertically oriented striations were originally deposited horizontally on a floor of an ancient ocean, however many uh, millions of years ago. And then they were basically pushed, pushed up and folded. Okay, just a series of, uh, just a series of drastically steep anticlines and synclines pushed up, folded like a carpet, like a rug on a hardwood floor, like a rug pushed up against a wall on a hardwood floor. The, the compressional forces came from the southwest. But look at it. Got the fucking mountains here and beautiful Huasteca Canyon are incredible. And then right here we got a beautiful uh, member of the Tagiri tribe, uh, the Marigold tribe. This is a species of Parophyllum. And it smells like it. Look at the glands. Look at the glands on the uh, at Involucre. Oh, you see those? It smells incredible. Look at those goddamn mountains though. Holy hell. Holy shit. Just, just, just lithified calcareous ooze. Lithified calcareous sediments that were once at the bottom of the ocean. This massive, massive thorns on this Vichelia. You can see the fruit maturing right there. Looks kind of like our black brush acacia we get in South Texas, except the flower spikes are much smaller and the thorns are much larger. Fucking monster thorns. Holy hell. Just makes a nice, beautiful backdrop with the uh, those rock walls. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe that this was Vicellia rigidula because it looks quite different from the ones I see in Texas. Texas. But uh, I guess it is. I guess it is. Mimosoid subfamily of the P family Fabaceae. Flowers in a little spike. You know, 100 flowers per... Uh, Poor little spike, because the thorns just look so much more massive on this population than the ones I see in uh, southwest Texas. Well, south and west Texas, but anyway. But you see, it doesn't even have any leaves right now. Look at all the habitat up there, all just created by the geology, by, the, by that sheer rock wall, which again is created because those horizontal bedding planes have been basically flipped up nearly vertical. God, it's windy as shit. Look, it's a species of Dodonea. Maple family, Sapindaceae. Maple and uh, quote unquote Buckeye family, the Aesculus family, Sapindaceae. There's those fruits. Little papery Samaras. See, there's the little seeds inside. Little seeds inside that uh, big papery fruit. Excellent for getting around on the wind. Then here we got a species of Populus, a cottonwood the leaf margin glabrous and waxy leaves with a little dentate margin growing in the wash you can see it's about the fruit or flower excuse me you can see it's about the flower or are those the fruits oh my god those might be you know what those are the fruits those are the ovaries see that i was correct the first time those are the fruits see they got the old stigma up top there see that which received the wind, which received the windborne pollen, and so now those uh, fruits will mature, and that uh, stigma will fall off. You get a bunch of powdery, powdery fluff inside. A bunch of powdery shit. A bunch of fluffy shit. You like fluffy shit? Look at that. That's nice, huh? This is a fucking nalina. I thought this was a grass, but uh, you got these old spent flower spikes. Ah, oh, shit. Woody, woody inflorescence is not spiced. You see, maybe a tanical. So you got your prosopis, your mesquite, your cordia, boraginaceae, a dwarfed cordia. 
They get upwards of 20 feet tall in South Texas, uh, where they're not growing on bare rock and they actually got soil. Got the Tacoma stands right here, Bignoni AC, Catalpa family. You got, uh, well, this is the Tacoma flowering. You got agave lechuguilla, as well as a bounty of other agaves growing out of that rock wall. You can see their flower spikes way up there. Oh, you got some hectias too, it looks like, some bromeliads. Nice abutilon. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. You got a nice hectia right there. Pineapple family, the bromeliaceae, the bromeliads. We're not even, we're barely in a canyon. This is all, this isn't, uh, you know, some rare spot. This isn't hard to get to. This is just right off the, the fucking road. You know, there's like uh, young urban well to do is going jogging over there. You got this nice agave there. Look at that. With needle like leaves. Shit. See, parts are drying, parts are going off. Look at that goddamn hectia. Look at it. A mean bromeliad. Convergent evolution with uh, with the uh, agave. It's just a just a leaf rosette of a bunch of sharp shit. See, there's the flower. The inflorescence is up there. Over here we got Hatrofa dioica and a sickly looking. I was gonna say mammillaria, but those recurved spines would lead me to believe it's not in that genus. Look at those tubercles. Maybe a hematocactus? Anyway, there's the Hatrofa uh, dioica. Oh, that's crispy. How does a plant come to grow out of a rock wall? You know, they just germinate, they get wedged in that little crevasse, you know, a little crack like that. And water trickles down, goes right into that crack. Just the same way that when it rains, you see everything, all the plants on the side of the, the highway are doing better than the, the ones that are further away from the highway. Just that, that flat, you know, in, mostly impermeable surface just channels the water right to the edges of the highway or the cracks in the rock. And then they just, they just grow slow, but deep inside that rock, it stays relatively cool and they, you know, they get moisture. They, they, there's no way the moisture that's already in there can leak out. I don't know. Something like that. So we got this echino series just dangling off, kind of looking like a little dong. Okay, growing out of this looks like some sort of damn conglomerate there. How does shit? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Look at that ma'am, just growing right out of the uh, little crack in a rock. Looks a little bit rough though. It looks a little, uh, little red, a little stress pigmented. Look at that ma'am. Doesn't look too good. Looks looks quite stressed. Look at all those little tubercles. Look at how it's kind of sunken in and red near the base. Look at this uh, limestone too. How it reacts with acidic rainwater. See the little dimpling on it? That's some interesting shit all over here, man. So much good stuff. Oh yeah, that's what that plant was. That was just it was just a hematocactus. Formerly uh, in the genus Ferrocactus, but it's quite obviously a hematocactus. They do have those uh, recurved spines though. You can see how the tips of them are recurved like little fish hooks. Oh, look, that hectia is flowering. You see that? It's got those tiny white flowers on it. I'm not even going to try to get that to focus. And down here, we got a very cool mammillaria. Almost looks like mammillaria plumosa. Look at this. Look at how goddamn fuzzy that thing is. Blends right in with the wall. Is that even alive down there? Is it alive? Oh, yeah, if there's green, you could see green in those tubercles down there. But look at that, talk about evolving in this uh, environment. Just how, how many millions of years and what, what, specifically, what specifically what selection pressures did it take to get such a goddamn fuzzy little poof ball of a cactus to evolve? Look at that, so you've just got these ex extremely elongated trichomes that pop out of the areoles, the same space, that the, the same place that the spines do, but this cactus doesn't even have spines. It's just got little hairs that pop out of those goddamn little nipples, little tubercles. You can't, you can barely see them. You see, yeah, see, there you go. You see the green in there? Do you see what's going on? See that? You see, it's just a tubercle with a bunch of trichomes on it. Holy shit. It's not even flowering. It's already blowing my mind. Shit like this is why I get into plants. This is, when you see stuff like that, I mean, it's nice to be able to name shit, but it's not just about naming 
all the shit that grows in a wash downer. It's about understanding how they interact with each other, how the species interact with each other, how they interact with the organisms, the pollinators, all the other animals, the fucking shit for brain bipedal apes that you know are walking around uh, constantly trying to destroy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, we don't need to take it. I'm just fucking around. Just fucking with you. All right. But see that? Like, how does that? It's the same genus as the one I just showed you down the rock wall that looked like shit. But look, look at, look at what this lineage, this distinct lineage, what this genome has been through. It's a goddamn fuzzy cactus. It's plumose. It's got so many fucking hairs on it. It looks like a, a little fuzzy sea urchin. All just the result of natural selection. The same way that humans can breed, you know, 300 different dog breeds from the same species of wolf, the environment can breed all kinds of different species and, and variations on a, on a common theme over millions of years, all right? Environment being, you know, geology, climate, presence of herbivores, pollinators, uh, exposure to sunlight, etc. Is it hectic? Too? I, you know, that's why I wanted to come up here, because I want to get flowers in it. I don't know if I'm able to do that, though. It doesn't really seem like there's anywhere for me to stand. Look, you got a little knight of scolus there, too. A little malamu hair. Mean euphorb. Spiny prick. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to get down to. You know, I got stabbed in the leg like nine times by these legit geese. Okay, it was a little sketchy, but I came up here anyway. You see Alan down there? Alan, what are you doing down there? Look, see, he's, I, he's, he's looking at something. I don't know what he's doing anyway. Okay, so we're up here with this Hectia, a mean bromeliad. You can see, look at the look at the margins of this fucker. Look at it, look at those. I've been cut by this so many times. It's really nice when the uh, end half millimeter of those uh, marginal spines break off in your skin. And then, uh, you know, you squirt a little pus out two weeks later. And hopefully, if you're lucky, you squirt the, the end of that projection out too. But let's look at this uh, panicle. Let's look at this uh, dense inflorescence of tiny white flowers. Three petals, because it is a monocot. Six uh, stamens with green anthers up top. Look, and you got scales. Scale trichomes, scale like trichomes on the stem, on the sepals, on everything. But uh, you can see, look at that, look at that. What pollinates this? Where are the pollinators at? Probably not anywhere near here because it's windy as hell right now. And I, I do have to get down. I don't know how I'm going to do that. It's a. Fuck it. Whatever, who gives a shit? Look at that, though. You stare at flowers all day. Not because they're dainty and they're pretty. I mean, they are. They're, they're quite beautiful. You know, they'll calm you right down. You, they'll quell those homicidal thoughts. But also, just wh how, why, they, why do they do that? Why do they evolve like that? Look at those bracts, subtending each one of those tiny flowers that hasn't opened yet, and then the ones that do. So this whole, this whole inflorescence, this whole panicle, all right, that whole rad will be blooming for upwards of a few weeks, you know? By the time this flower is done, the one above it will be, uh, you know, fully mature and going off. And then the one above that will be fully mature when the one below it's going off, etc. So it's providing nectar for quite a, quite a long, quite a long while. And again, how deep, where do those roots go? I do wish I had fucking x-ray vision. Just see where those, how deep those roots go into those little cracks of this, uh, is this Cretaceous limestone? I was told, I was too lazy to even look. Quite a few million years old though. Okay, like a few dozen million years old, back when uh, this this was an ocean, or the floor of an ocean, rather. This kind of sucks. God damn it. Look at that guy. Little crassulaceous bastard growing out of a little crack. Jade plant family, crassulaceae. Oh, God, I love an astral leap. Don't you love xeric ferns, fuzzy desert ferns of the family Pteridaceae? Pteridaceae, with a P, is the coolest ferns. Look at little agave. Yeah, it's so much shit. Good shit. Okay, I say shit endearingly. And over here we got our friend Candelila, Euphorbia antisyphilitica. Because I guess at one point some fucking wise ass thought it cured syphilis. It does not. But you're welcome to try. Huh? You know? Find find the filthiest whorehouse, no offense to whores, in, uh, in Mexico City and go see what you can get and come down here and use this as an herbal remedy. Okay? Or mark it on, on your Etsy shop. Should I open a crime pays Etsy shop? Huh? How long would it last before it got shut down? Anyway, great fucking plant here though, okay? Waxy, and it was used for soap at one point because it is so waxy. See that intense farina of wax it's got on it? Uh, it's mostly in West Texas. I believe there's, oh, see it's bleeding and it's a euphorbious, you know, poinsettia family. 
to euphorbia so it's bleeding the uh, uh, toxic latex too. I gotta be sure not to touch my eye with that stuff. Here's the flowers, the tiny, tiny flowers. And I've actually never seen it flowering in person. Um, those are technically not uh, flowers, they're inflorescences. Okay, because it it's a trademark of the genus Euphorbia. You have Cyathea, Cyathea in plural. So all, what look like stamens are actually parts of a, a individual male flowers. So, and those are not petals, those are just white bracts. And you can see the wax on it right there too. Look, I gotta do, look, I gotta work on my hands. Should I use, I should start using some lotion. Look how, how toasted and dry they are. But anyway, at one point this was used to make soap, I guess. And uh, I'm just thinking really, I'm just glad I didn't wear shorts. You know, I was gonna come up here in my fucking Daisy Dukes. But if I did, I would have just been stabbed by all this stuff up here, you know. I love it, but I don't want to get stabbed by it. Look at that. Nothing, no mountain range will enchant you like the Sierra Madre Oriental. Look at those little caves. Holy shit. And this is nothing. This is We just entered it. We're like still at the, the head of the canyon. And the thing about Euphorbia anti-syphilitica is it's really nice for other cacti to hide. See, like this guy. See, I can't even see what that is. Oh, it's just that mam. It's just that mammalaria. See the dimpling of the limestone? Yeah, right there we got that uh, nice, nice uh, member of the Crassulaceae. Look at those succulent leaves. Kind of folded, kind of cone duplicate with a little lip on them. Just growing right out the crack. These are these are hot among poachers. These will get ripped right off. Just pluck them right off the wall. That's probably why I haven't seen too many down below. I had to come way to fuck up here. It's nice though, and when they uh, when they flower, it's an even it's a it's a more grandiose spectacle than just those beautiful leaf rosettes. How much diversity can there be just on a rock wall, where nothing can get at it, and everything's specialized to growing directly out of uh, cracks in the rocks? What's that cactus thing? Which one? This? It's a kind of serious. Oh. oh, look at all this agave. Jesus Christ. Another wonderful case of convergent evolution. Side by side, the Hectia bromeliaceae and the agave. Not even in the same order, let alone the same family. And look at that. See, that's what you get. Created by a bedding plane, that whole goddamn block of limestone. All right, originally horizontal, flipped up. All right, because I think uh, what is it? that's the southwest. So the compression came from, from that way. You know, over the last, I don't know, 100 million years or so, this is uh, early Cretaceous limestone, so roughly 140 million years old. This was at the bottom of the ocean. You know, I don't know if I really want to do that, walk through this shit. They got buffalo grass here too. Horrible invasive that's still actively being seeded for cattle. Smothers everything. Look at those rock walls up there. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, a little cave. It's a good thing I was just about ready to get rid of these pants anyway. Because they'd be so full of holes by the time I'm done here. Look at that. What do you got over there? Oh, look at that. God, all the Mexican Crassulaceae are so cool. All the Mexican members of this family of succulents are so cool. Saxifragales is the order. Crassulaceae is the family. And, I, you know, down there, if this is the same thing I was looking at down there. Well, no, you know what? This does look a little different. It looks a little bit softer. Same family. Down there, maybe it did look like an Echeveria. Or maybe it was just a, a younger one of these. I don't know. This doesn't look like an Echeveria, though. This looks more like a sedum. See soft, very soft leaves. There's the inflorescences. They're spent. But you can still see the calices on there. See that? Little papery bracts, little papery sepals. Any seeds in there? I don't know. I didn't check. I wonder what color the flowers are when it's going off. Could be hummingbird pollinated, might just be white. Growing out of a crack in the limestone, a crevasse. Is this that cremaria? I can't, you know, I don't know, it might be. Everything's so dry and crispy. Anyway, crassulaceae, all the, look into any of the, any of the Mexican genera of crassulaceae are fucking amazing, bangers. Someone's probably written a, a monograph on, a, on, on the Mexican members of this family. I got it, you know, I got a ways to go. Yeah, fuck this. Just getting cut up, you know? If you go to islands where there's no herbivores, you don't get shit like this. This stuff only evolves in the presence of uh, grazing animals, okay? Which are selecting for more spiny plants. But you don't, you, you get, a, get on an island where there are no grazing herbivores, you're not gonna have any 
spiny plants. She'll have shit that grows big, and if it's a you know seasonally dry island, that'll get it'll evolve succulents. But you're not going to get all this mean shit. So you got you can really thank the herbivores of the past however many millions of years for uh, how I'm getting stabbed right now. Look at that. You got fucking. This is a nightmare. Anyway, who do we got here? Look at this plumos bastard. Oh, you got the opposite leaves. Look at that. And then uh, these flowers are just these sprays. I can't even tell what the shit's going on here. Are these the flowers or the fruits? Oh, look, there's a flower. There's an actual flower open. So they're just really, re everything's fuzzy. The stems, the branches, the flowers. And uh, there's where it's coming. I just coming right up from it in between uh, the agave. Look at this. No leaves on this thing. No leaves. Just photosynthetic stems, opposite branching. So it would have opposite leaves if it did. Not even, maybe vestigial leaves somewhere. And then there's that tiny flower. Tiny flowers in there. Look at that. Yeah, you know, I keep getting stabbed. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna head back down. Look at this little nest though. He goes in horizontally. He's got like a little dome. Looks comfy. Where are we gonna get down? Oh look, it's a fruit on a milkweed vine. Huh? A fruit of a milkweed vine. See, you can make you bleed. Bleed some uh, some juicy latex. See that? Leafless now though, it's the dry season. You get the summer rain. So what you, Alan, what you doing? You taking a picture of this night of scolas? You focus stacking this or what are we doing? Yeah, I got it set up to take 67 pictures of it. Okay, why don't you tell us about, you had an altercation with a night of scolas from what I understand, did you not? Yeah. What what happened exactly? Um, which one? There's been so many. The one where you had to get the EpiPen. Oh yeah, I was going up the, the side of a hillside. And I grabbed a Nidoscolis tree. It was like this tree that had really strong stingers so on it. So a larger species than this diminutive one. Yeah, yeah, this was in Oaxaca near Huautla. And it felt like about 100 bee stings at once. And then after about a few minutes, I got uh, welts over every inch of my body. Okay, so you broke out in the hives. Yeah, so then I uh, drove, had to drive myself because my friends didn't know how to drive uh, to the doctor. And they injected me with epinephrine and saved my life for about eight bucks. Uh, eight bucks? Yeah. That, what would that cost in the United States? Probably oh, like five, three or four thousand. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. This light right here. You know oh, these yeah. stinging. You know these stinging. Uh, these little stinging trichomes contain serotonin. Oh yeah, I think oh, I just heard yeah. that. That's awesome. Should I do it? Should I just get? I should just maybe I'll just rub my one on the just back of your hand. I'll rub my scrotum. I dip my scrotum on that thing. How's that? This is Sora. This lichen right there. Yeah. But it looks like it so looks like it di like it died. Puss Sora. Then we got a beautiful agave up there. It's like agave striata. It's just a, I believe these are the same species. This one's just a little bit younger. Look at it, goddamn! Look at all the the leaf blade it, is that hairs or new emerging leaf blades or what i can't tell it looks like it's the leaf new leaf blades such a beautiful rosette and there's the old inflorescence things look a little stressed here but uh oh that's nice look at that just tiny teeth on the margins of that leaf and some stress pigments too because it is kind of dry but again once it rains you only need a little bit of rain it's all going to channel right into that crack and probably last there for a while because once the water gets in it can't go i mean it can't go anywhere except out you know out once it sinks deep enough the roots will suck it up and it is a succulent so this agave will just store it for a while it'll be fine you know they'll make it another couple months oh sorry were you guys bored were you guys bored waiting we're coming down don't worry so you 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 got stuck with the night of scolas yeah i just hit myself in the back of the finger to try it out how does it feel now it's, uh, ah. it's a lot like a bee stick. Ah! Let me get in there. Let me get... Ah! Oh, it's kind of nice, though. It's urticating. Yeah, you, they got dungeons for this. You got to pay a dominatrix to do this to you in some places. <laughs> oh, 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 it's getting down right over there. It is now, so we're, we're back at the bottom of the canyon. This is all just alluvium, just a series of uh, intermittent rock falls having happened over the last however many thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. Here we got this uh, 
little cactus. I don't know what this shit that is. Some cacti can look so different when they're young versus when they're mature. Look at this hairy thing. Looks like a disturbing hairy dang. Or perhaps one of those uh, those fancy uh, dogs they breed in Oaxaca. You know, the uh, the hairless, well, not the hairless ones. The uh, ones with a lot of hair. They're mostly hairless, but they got like a toupee. Happy dogs, the ones that I've met. Very ecstatic little creatures. I met one on a beach south of San Jose del Pacifico once. And it was just so elated to be there. You know, we could all learn a lot from those fucking weird, whatever. I don't know what weird breed this, but that's what this kind of looks like. But it also could just be a species of Opuntia that, uh, actually, no, maybe it's not. I don't know what the shit this is. We'll have to figure it out. But again, look at hairy aerials. Ooh, hairy aerials atop uh, little dimpled nipples and tubercles. This nice verbena. Look at that, verbenaceae. Almost looks like a lantana. Bunch of tiny little uh, bilaterally symmetrical flowers organized into this uh, this uh, little spike. Just sessile in the spike, each with a bract subtending it. And then there's those leaves, opposite leaves, because we're talking uh, order lamiales, you know, opposite as opposed to alternate. Bunch of good shit in the wash. But this thing smells pretty good. Look at this Sevalia, another stinging plant, another urticating plant from the Loisaceae, the Menzelia family. Look at that, look at that, look at those. Is that, I, I've dissected one of these before. I forget if that's the stigma or the stamens. I don't want to dissect it. You know, we got to be on a move here. I'm going to dissect this one. Look at those fuzzy, fuzzy petals though. Fuzzy petals, fu fuzzy petals, fuzzy calices. And then there's those stinging hairs. See that? Nice perennial. Look at the butthole on the side of that mound over there. You see that? Isn't that nice? Look, you got two buttholes next to each other. You ever know somebody with two buttholes? Look at you, you got that alpine glow on those mountains over there. Nice member of the rose family right here and a giveaway for that. You can't normally use leaves to give away uh, identifications of plants, uh, but uh, or at least according to family. But in the case of the rose family, sometimes you can. That the uh, serrate margin kind of gives it away as a rose, a member of the rose family. Stiff leaves, sclerophyllous leaves. This is vaccalinia. Vaccalinia corimbosa. It's not flowering right now, but uh, you know, you could look it up. I'll put a little photo on uh, on the uh, on the screen right here. Get a close up look at that leaf texture. See, rather waxy and hard. See that cuticle? Got a thick cuticle right there. All those little white uh, white cells. And of course, that uh, those leaf margins will help uh, keep keep stuff from gnawing. Stuff that in your mouth to chew in it. Can't imagine it feel too nice. And shit, we'll, we'll uh, include this one too. It's getting late. We're almost over here. Tacoma stands, Catalpa family, Bignoniaceae, Zygomorphic Corolla, quite attractive. And you've probably seen one, you know, uh, in uh, in your grandma's yard if you live in the right climate. Four stamens in there at different levels. You see the style further down in the back. Who's in there with the ants? What are they doing in there? What are they doing in there? Look at it. So four stamens. Four anthers and uh, a little style on the back. And of course the foliage is uh, pinnate like that. And then there's those, there's those little fruits with the seeds in them, the fuzzy seeds, see that? Okay, we'll get this guy too before we wrap it up. This is a uh, pretty common in cultivation, but still an ultimate banger from the Cesalpinia subfamily of the P family Fabaceae. Erythrostemin mexicanus. Look at that, all those 10 stamens just uh, well, I guess they're they're all fused at the base, but just forming a little like a little slide of uh, hairy filaments ending in uh, anthers, just uh, ready to dump pollen. And of course, you got the style in there too. You see the style? That little green knob doesn't have an anther on top of it. That then connects to the uh, ovary to the pea pod that uh, these flowers will turn into when they're uh, ready to fruit. Nice, good, good for the butterfly, good pollinator plant right here. Loads of nectar, see these are already maturing. See, that's just the ovary with that little, that same little style and the petals have fallen off. Oh, it's a hairy pea, kind of glandular. Petals have fallen off, stamens have fallen off. Style and stigma have withered and there's that uh, swollen ovary, swollenovaries.com, www.swollenovaries.com. All right, I guess we'll end it there. That's all I got for today. We'll end it with a beautiful shot of those two buttholes in the, in the rock wall right next to each other. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.
Who's up there? Is there a guy in there? Is there a guy in there? Ever seen anybody with a prolapse rectum? Seemed like some of those weightlifters. They they really do can't they can't do that. They really can't do that over there. Alright, that's really all I gotta go fuck yourself by. We don't really need a crowd to have a party. Just a funky beat in your ass to get it started. Feel a night and dance the night away. Ooh, 140 million year old marine sediments. Calcium carbonaceous ooze. <laughs> that's not a fucking word. Calcium carbonaceous. Ooh, cal a calcium carbonaceous dinner platter for you. Oh, yeah, you like that? You think it's nice? Oh, yeah, more of a butthole rock. The butthole rock. Two buttholes next to each other. When Since when the toilet humor and science not mix, huh? Squares.